Hi, hi everyone. So uh, this is a live presentation, so don't worry, the video will be available for replay just after. Um, so this is a live demo. I wanted to present you uh, the game myself because I don't think that a lot of people realized that um, you can actually download the full demo for free on the previous video because I've seen that uh, there are like uh, four, uh, 400... Oh, you, you downloaded the demo, right. <laughs> Hope you liked it. So uh, I have updated it today. Uh, it has been updated because some people came back to me uh, about some problems, something that they wanted to be modified. So basically uh, things about the controllers. Like for example, where, because I, I'm playing uh, on my own, I'm playing uh, with keyboard and uh, and mouse, and so uh, I I focus myself on those only. But um, but uh, some people like wanted to play the the game with the controller, so I made uh, a controller version. So you can actually use a controller. You can use an Xbox controller in order to play the the, the demo. Uh, but the problem was that some of the inputs were not very ideal, I'd say. Like for example, for running, you have to click directly on the joystick, which wasn't very like likable, <laughs> I would say. So uh, I made it, I, I um, modified it so that you can actually use the trigger. This time you can use the trigger in order to run. So it's a little bit more uh, comfortable in order to, to play correctly the game. Also, I altered some of the buttons. So with the controller, you directly have a button in order to open the map system and one button to open the inventory. And those buttons are like completely opposites. So now you don't need to go into the menus in order to, uh, you know, uh, access directly uh, the um, the map. So that is something to, to know. So uh, I will play the last version of the demo. Uh, you can actually download it. It's already up there on the previous video. Uh, I will add that also uh, beneath that video, the video I'm doing now. So the live demo will be actually like uh, available for replay. And so you will have access uh, for the link just below. In any way, if people want to download the video right now, while I'm doing the live, uh, you can do this with the previous video. So the one with uh, just the teaser, you just go beneath it. You have, you still have the link. You can download it for free. Uh, as I said, I want it to be clear. Uh, this is a fan demo. It will always be free because I don't want to have any problems <laughs> with Konami in any way. Um, but it will always be free. You can download it. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm not getting any money out of it and I won't like I don't want to have any money I don't want to get any money with the the demo I've made uh, which which could be strange for some some people but uh, you know I don't want like it's it's illegal basically to gain money with a property that I don't have um, oh <laughs> so Max uh, thanks uh, but now I, I can only speak in English you know because it's uh, international so I can't actually speak in French you bastard <laughs> so Yusha is actually one of my friends a French friend because I'm French and so he's going to troll me <laughs> basically he's going to, to do like a lot of trolling I, I know him a little bit too well to be honest so without further ado let's start the last version of the demo and also um, during this live, I will also discuss a little bit about uh, the backstory and you know uh, behind the behind the scene, sort of speak. Uh, how uh, I worked on the demo, uh, what was the most difficult thing? The, uh, the only sad thing is that I wanted um, I wanted um, uh, Brendan to be to be there, but uh, actually is not. He is the one who actually uh, voiced. Harry Mason in the demo and he's not available this weekend I'm a little bit sad that he's not here yeah, like uh, it would have been interesting to 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 hear from him how he approached the character uh, how he uh, he how he experienced it and some of the ideas that he's thrown into into the mix for the demo 
that that was very interesting and that the his ideas sometimes it'd be too much too many ideas at the same time but some of them are quite interesting and so i implemented them into the into the demo so let's start the last version of the demo right now so for a lot of people yes that uh, demo was made with unity why not unreal because i'm working with unreal a lot of time <laughs> And to be honest, I don't really like Unreal that much. <laughs> so for for all the people, like I, I will start uh, explaining a little bit about some of the Easter eggs and some things that have hidden into the game. So sorry, a little bit of spoiler, but uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, you can actually jump some of the part of the video. You can, you can already jump to the moment I'm actually describing. I understand that? Oh yeah, speak English. <laughs> Uh, just let me open that a little bit more. That's why I speak English. <laughs> good for you, good for you, Max. <laughs> so, uh, first thing that you might encounter is the fact that um, depending on if you saved uh, in the diner uh, during the demo, you will have a new uh, welcome screen, actually. So uh, if, you, if you never played the demo before, you will have a different beginning screen without the load, like you have a load uh, option right there. Um, so first time you will start the demo, normally you will have uh, the forest with the, the, the car, uh, just for the opening scene, the opening, opening sequence. And uh, if you already saved, so you will have this title screen with the, the cafe, actually. So let's start a new game. So, what's the verdict? You are right. It's closed. Okay, well, I'm sure there will be another gas station down the road. I think we can make it. Jody, where are you going? Hey, Jody, hold on. So, uh, first thing to explain, maybe, uh, I don't know if, uh, is it like 60 FPS? On my side, 60 FPS, but I don't think this is the case in the, uh, in the video I'm actually having. But anyway, um, some things. So Brandon Brandon Feig is actually the actor playing uh, Harry Mason, uh, and he is actually the one who had the idea of having like uh, an intro where you can actually see Harry and Jodie finding Cheryl. Um, yeah, because uh, I, we we talked about it a little bit. If that Cheryl. <laughs> No, it's not Cheryl, it's Jody. Like, it, it was actually very complicated in order to get some information about uh, the background of the game. Like, for example, if you, if you play the original Silent Hill, you have no idea about uh, the name of Harry's wife. Like, you don't know. So I had to find out in the uh, novelization of the game, so in the novel, you, hear, you, you discover that Harry's wife's name is actually Jody, Jody Mason. And so I was like, okay, so now um, I know. And uh, I think in Silent Hill Origins also, like you can hear the name of, of Harry's wife, but in the first game, you don't have any information about Harry's wife. You just know that she died uh, before. She, she, she died a little bit before uh, the beginning of the game, but that's all that is known actually. Um, so, in order to make uh, the um, 
the expressions, you know, fa fascia animation, etc. We had to do fascia motion capture for that. Um, it, w it was not that well made for the intro, but I spent a lot of time working on the cinematic in the cafe. So cafe is actually a little bit better, I'd say. Uh, but here uh, we used uh, fashion motion capture for, for that. So that was, that was very interesting. Also new things that have been added into the demo are actually reflections. So I don't know if you can see, but on the car now you have like real time reflections. That is something I wanted to, to add, but never had the time before to, to add that on the demo. So I wanted the, um, the original, like the, the opening, to be uh, like a reference to Silent Hill 2. Like uh, having, uh, if you played Silent Hill 2, you know that you have that uh, long like pathway through the forest that is pretty long, actually. Um, and uh, I wanted to have that also. Um, uh, it's also a reference to a lot of other Silent Hill moments where you just have to run and do, just like Silent Hill Origins, for example, at the beginning of the game, you just have to run. And actually there is an Easter egg right there in the forest. Wait for me, Jody. Like I wanted to, uh, I wanted to know like if people will actually f uh, find some of the Easter eggs, like there are a couple of Easter eggs hidden inside the demo so i will show them but if you don't want to be spoiled don't look at it and try to find them on your own because normally here so you're actually going through the forest and normally yeah you sh you should actually go over there oh hello brendan so this is brendan brendan face the the, the one the the voice actor of harry mason is right there in the chat <laughs> So I, I was talking about uh, when we made actually like fashion motion capture. And so that the, the fact that you had to film yourself <laughs> doing some, some, you know, fascia gestures and doing some <laughs> gestures, etc. cetera. Um, and so, yeah, the something that, that were actually a little bit complicated for me when doing fashion motion capture was actually the fact that uh, Brendan was doing fashion motion capture but on my side, I did the body motion capture. So actually body and fascial were actually two different things. And so sometimes um, the, the speech was totally great, like uh, no problem about the lip syncing, the fashion animation, etc. But the gaze, so the eyes, eye direction was always a little bit off. So I had to reanimate it a lot by hand in order to characters to look at each other because sometimes they were looking just like not exactly the right to each other though, so they were actually looking around so it was a little bit like weird <laughs> so i had to, to reanimate those by hand but no not that much of a problem so normally i had it, um, a light source over there so that players can actually go there so in that direction but actually you can go on the other side with a dead tree right there okay warning a little bit of a of an easter egg here to do a remake of Origins. No, I don't want to do any more remakes. <laughs> I don't want to do any more remakes because uh, I don't want to have any problems with Konami. Uh, Konami is very well known for shutting down, you know, fan projects. Like uh, there was a fan project for remaking the original Metal Gear Solid, uh, the original Metal Gear. Yeah, and, and Metal Gear Solid. Now that I think about it, both, both projects were shut down. Actually, and uh, um, I was expecting a lot about those projects that some of them were looking great, but actually Konami is not letting the fans do whatever they want with the properties. Not not like Valve, for example, Valve, the, the guys who made uh, Half-Life. They are uh, very affectionate with the, uh, the fans that they, re they really, really love their fans. And so they are leaving the fans doing like remakes or sequels or things like that about their property. So uh, I would love to, <laughs> to work with Valve, but uh, if you want to remake something for Konami, like uh, not possible. So yeah, it's a bit sad to be honest. So uh, here, for example, so you're coming from here, 
this is uh, the pathway in which you're actually coming from so if you go there you will activate the cutscene to end the opening and so if you go on the other side you have the dead tree right there and if you go there you will see a strange figure I don't know if you can see uh, there is one person just hidden behind the tree and if you go a bit closer She will run away and disappear. And if you listen, you can hear uh, Alessa. You can hear like a whispering saying Alessa. This, this is actually the um, apparition of Alessa just watching Jody getting Cheryl. Cheryl. I, I thought it was like a, a good thing. At the beginning, I wanted it to be more like obvious to have a cutscene showing Alessa watching from a, from a distance that Harry and Jody getting uh, Cheryl. But I was like, yeah, it would be actually more fun for players to try to find her, you know. But I'm I'm pretty sure like a lot of people, like just totally missed. I thought that I... ah yeah, <laughs> yeah so so someone, <laughs> yeah actually yes this is uh, this is Alessa, this is Alessa's model that is just hiding behind the tree, and if you get in too too close, she will actually get a little bit like behind the tree, and then she disappears. And so here, so here you can find uh, the original uh, house from the Gillespie's. So this is Gillespie's house. It was kind of hard to find uh, the right proportions because actually you can only see the original house in the um, cutscene, in the CG cutscene at the at the beginning of the the original game. So it was uh, kind of difficult because the house is totally different in Silent Hill Origins. It's like having the same type of you know configuration, but not the right size, not the right color, and also the fact that it's near a road, which actually is not like if you're watching the original CG cutscene, it's not near a road. It it looks like it's middle of the woods, actually. So yeah. So here, cutscene moments. So normally you should you, you will hear uh, if you play the game on your side you will hear a music playing in the background. Uh, music playing is actually uh, the main theme from Silent Hill Three. So this is the theme of uh, Ether. If you never played Silent Hill Three, sorry, huge spoiler. Uh, in Silent Hill Three, you're playing Ether Mason, which is actually Cheryl. And so I wanted to have like a, ra a little node to Cheryl for the players, so if you're starting uh, hearing that music box sound, this is actually the theme of 73, so the, the theme of uh, Ether, which is Cheryl. Really nice shot, front house of a distance. Yeah, uh, that, I don't know if you remember, but at, at the original, like uh, I still have the video, so after that, that um, live presentation, I will actually uh, live uh, gameplay, I will jump to the original uh, pictures and videos of the original version of the game. Uh, the original version just looked like crap, <laughs> to be honest. Like it was a little bit too less subtle. Oh, Jody, what were you thinking? I mean, didn't you hear me? I, I, ju I just found her here, <laughs> next to this burned house. By the way, the um, the actress doing the um, the. Um, the voice didn't actually make fashion motion capture, so I had to redo everything myself for her. But she did a great job. Like the the, the voice actress did a great job playing. She is actually the one who is playing uh, Jody and Sybil. Because at, at one point I wanted to have two different voice actresses, and she uh, she um, she told me that she could actually do both characters. So I was like, okay, let's let's give it a shot. And actually, she did a great job. Like I can't actually hear. Like uh, I'm not a nat native uh, English speaker, so uh, maybe you can do the difference. But for me, by here, I can't. Yeah, both. Uh, yeah, she she um, one actress is playing both characters, so she's playing Jody and she's playing uh, Sybil. At the beginning, I was like uh, wanted to. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think we discussed about it. Like uh, you were just saying that Jody uh, was actually great, 
but uh, actually uh, this is the same actress and she she made like jody feels a little bit like um i would not say weaker but like more like um you know innocent in a way than sybil sybil feels like more like a, a, a strong woman like she she feels like she's in control of everything she's like police woman basically but jody feels more that that kind of innocence that i wanted to have for the character like you you can take if you like she want to adopt cheryl uh, just listening to her you're like if you're harry you can't actually you know uh, refuse adopting cheryl this doesn't make any sense i wonder how long she's been out here look around you harry she's been abandoned Always talked about. I mean, since we, well, since, since. That part was. Uh, sorry, I'm just you know stopping every every time. And just to explain it, uh, that part of the dialogue was actually the most difficult for me to to write because it never felt right. Uh, every time uh, I wanted to 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 make it obvious that Jody was sick. Yeah, she she's ill basically and she uh you heard you, you learned that in the novelization of sand hill uh, you uh, learned that she she had a disease and she died from that disease and that disease um just uh prevented her to have any you know child and so that that was my idea of pushing uh, the characters to adopt cheryl was the fact that jody um, find finds in Cheryl the this opportunity to become a mother for the first time in her life you know and and that that is her her only chance and it feels a little bit like destiny like fate that she found Cheryl so that was kind of a, a, a nice touch but um at one point I, I don't know if you remember Brendan but at, at one point um Jody was supposed to say uh, because I can't have children and when uh, the actress recorded that line, but when I played it with the animation, I was like, hmm, f feels too too forced. Like, uh, hey, hey, you get that? She's healed, she's healed. She can't have children. I'm like, yeah, it's not very really subtle. Like, hmm, I'm, I'm missing the point here. So I cut that line. I cut the line like, because I can't have children and I just cut it at since. And the player had the opportunity to, you know, figure it out himself. Sweetheart, I, I know, but... With the reaction of Harry, it's, it's a little bit more obvious. Yeah, come on. Let's head back to the car. I'll drive us to the nearest town and we'll try to sort this out there. Yeah. What yeah um you you played it really well brendan like when when he's actually like you know it, you feel like it's difficult for him because he doesn't want to say it because it hurts you know this is the love of his, of his life and he knows how how she feels about not the poss not having the possibility to have children and so uh, I, I wanted to transcribe it a little bit more. Like, I, I exaggerated a little bit more your facial expressions on that one. Like I really wanted uh, Harry to feel like it hurts, you know. Maybe it's a little bit too cartoonish. Maybe I push it a little, a little bit too more, too, too much. But at the same time, like, yeah, kind of works, you know. It's not, it's not I hyper photo real, so it kind of works. We were talking about if we ever had children. If it was a girl. The name you liked. I, I do. I liked Cheryl. Cheryl. And I forgot to show something. <laughs> I forgot to show that on Harry's. Like, you can actually see that in the demo if you're playing it yourself. On his t shirt, like, he has a black t shirt. And if you look. On the left side, it has the PT logo from the playable teaser from um, 
Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro's sadly avoided uh, game that was supposed to be Silent Hills. Like uh, all the Silent Hill projects that were announced are kind of interesting. But to be honest, I, I think we, uh, Silent Hills would have been like a great, great game. Like much more interesting than what we actually will have with Konami. So I'm a little bit sad that this project was just aborted, but you know. So yeah, you can actually find the, the logo right here in his, you know, on his t-shirt. So next, the so seven years later, so that was supposed to be the original, um, the original opening. Yeah, yeah, too, too sad, too sad that they aborted this one. So that was supposed like, at the origin of the project, I wanted the opening screen to be that little, that big sign right there. Just having the sign, just having the start button, and you just to see, you know, the, the forest and the wind and waiting for you to press start. And when you press start, you see the car, uh, Harry's car, just driving by. That was the original idea of the uh, original ver version of the demo. But we discussed about it, Brandon, we discussed about it and we found out that it would actually be better to, uh, to, to play the moments when Harry and Jody find Cheryl which was actually way more interesting to have uh, the player being able to witness that moment because uh, the only way you could actually witness that in the original game was actually in the cutscene, original cutscene, uh, that can all be only be played uh, if you don't push the start button when you start the first game. So that, that was a bit sad that this cutscene is not clearly uh, seen by the players when you're playing the original game. So being, I think the possibility to play that was actually more interesting. You can't imagine how hard it was to find that writing block texture <laughs> because uh, I really wanted to nail you know just like to be exactly the same as the original cutscene so uh, I had also to recreate all the clothes for Cheryl just like it was in uh, the original game which look, looks already a little bit dated if, if you're looking at how she's uh, the clothes she wears it's like hmm actually no kid should actually wear something like that but still, I had to recreate everything for, from scratch, so it was a little bit complicated. Also, uh, the car, I agree, this is not the original model, like this is not the original car that the characters are actually driving. Uh, but I found the original, the original model of the car, but actually it was not available for, for, um, for buying. So I was like trying to find, like I spent maybe one month, one entire month to try to find the right car, couldn't find it. So whatever, what the hell I said, well, let's, let's select another car and too bad. And here you have like a little uh, detail that is nice. The fact that if you look closely to Harry, you can see that he has like a, a little beard compared to the um, opening version of Harry. So here having Sybil on a bike. One of my friends ask me if it wasn't uh, stupid <laughs> that she was actually wearing sunglasses in the middle of the night. Could be, but at the same time she has to protect her eyes. And secondly, it was like that in the original game, so I couldn't actually change that. But I agree, maybe it's a little bit stupid. <laughs> Harry knows that too.
Hey, kiddo. Did you sleep good? We still have a few more miles to go before we get there. What the? Originally, we wanted to have like a camera inside the, the car when you're having the crash But it would have been like too much of a of too much work only for that sequence So here getting out of the car Cheryl? Originally you, I don't know if you remember Brendan, but we had like I like that Harry's yeah, it's a bit left. I don't know if you remember, but uh, originally we wanted to have like a little interactive sequence in which you can actually uh, turn on the radio and listen to uh, other Silent Hill songs. But uh, same thing, like I was like, uh, it would be like maybe two or three days of programming just in order to make it work properly. And just for that type of Easter egg, I was like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's just for another Easter egg, so uh, whatever. <laughs> All right, so let's run. Yeah, also uh, something that uh, is a little bit uh, infuriating for me is the fact that when the character, uh, you would see that the character is actually calling Cheryl, or what it, whenever he's actually talking, uh, you can actually, actually see his face is animated. But as you're actually running, you can't actually see it by yourself. Gerald, where are you? Yeah, you can see it a bit, but you can see that you need to turn the camera so f so fast that you can't actually see that. But yes, uh, I animated his face when he's actually speaking, even when this game playing. So here you can find the uh, Silent Hill. Yes, the Silent Hill sign. Uh, all the original songs are coming from the original game. Like I, I couldn't imagine like replacing the the original soundtrack. It's just not possible for me. I don't know if you guys just liked it. So here, um, it was actually a bit longer than the original game that, that running, but once again, a little bit like in Silent Hill 2, making you feel that you're actually getting away from civilization and you're actually going maybe to hell, something like that. Also a couple of Easter eggs. So you have a couple of posters here and there, like Lakeside Amusement Park with Robbie the Rabbit. A couple of uh, posters here and there that you can actually spot. Oh, and also, uh, right now with the last version of the game, uh, if you go to key binding, you have the possibility now to invert the camera axis. Like some people ask me to invert the axis because, uh, uh, for example, some people like having Y ax uh, inverted. So now you can actually do that here. Also, uh, re-implemented the um, controller pattern. So like, right now it's a little bit more comfortable for people to, to play with the controller. Also right here in video, now you can actually enable or disable some of the filters. So if you want to see uh, the game without all the effects, you can, but it will be very ugly <laughs> to be honest. gameplay camera just like in the original game you can see that Cheryl is just there looking away Cheryl Cheryl no Cheryl it's me dad uh, something that um, I programmed 
is the fact that if you're just walking after Cheryl, she will walk. But if you if you start running, she will run to get away f uh, faster. So like uh, it's a bit more complicated to do, but totally worth it because in the original game, you can do that too. If you're actually just walking, uh, Cheryl will just walk. And if you're running, then she will run away and just disappear. back here and so here that's that's actually the first thing that I've ever did with that demo was actually to recreate the original camera angles from the original Silent Hill like having Jesus. yes what happened here that camera angle really wanted to have that recreated perfectly Also here, having those iconic camera, camera movements. Huh? And that was the most complicated thing to do with that demo. Come on. Having the changes of the, of the lighting uh, without any loading screen. That was complicated. Like if you Carol. play the demo, you can see that there is actually like one loading screen at the uh, the Carol. beginning of the game, and after that part, no more loading screens. Uh, that shot, Re really, really like that shot. Actually, uh, at first I wanted to make uh, just like in the original, having the camera a bit upper, but found out found that angle by mistake and was like, oh uh, yeah, it looks actually really cool. I kept it. What's this doing here? So here, the last uh, camera angle, I just altered it. Yeah, this one. Yeah, mo looks a little bit more obvious. And right there, we find the great children. Oh God, what is that? What the hell is going on here? And so something like uh, and another little thing that like, uh, one of my friends who did a lot of uh, acting uh, made like for another project she made like a kind of strange um, breathing sound just like um, uh, we wanted to make like um, like a creature or, or like a zombie breathing just like <gasps> like that a little bit like something that is healed something that and I reused a lot of those breathing for the great children and I think it works really great. Get away from me. Leave me alone. So in that part you can't actually get away from them. You just have to die. Yeah, I will let myself die. Yeah, in that in that portion of the game, if you if you already played Silent Hill One, you know that you have to die here. And that's the cutscene. Hey, you're awake. I was beginning to wonder. How do you feel? Uh, like I've been run over by a truck. Hey. 
saw you. You're the cop that passed me on the road last night. The bike, I saw it in the ditch. So what happened? I saw... Don't worry about it. I want to know about you. Uh, are you from around here? No. I was on a trip with my daughter, but now she's missing. Have you seen her? She just turned seven last month. Short black hair, blue dress. I'm sorry. The only person I've seen in this town has been you. So what happened to this place? I mean, where is everyone? I wish I knew. I'm not from around here either. I'm a police officer from Bronze, the next town over. My name is Sybil Bennett. What's yours? Um, Harry. Harry Mason. Nice to meet you, Mr. Mason. Have you tried contacting your colleagues in Brams, you said? <sighs> All communications are dead. Radios, phones. The town is completely cut off. Anyway, I'm taking you back with me. Wait, are you serious? But my daughter is still out there. I'm all she's got. This goddamn fog isn't making things any easier. Mr. Mason, you shouldn't go out there. It's too dangerous. I don't even know what's going on here yet. One reason to be out there looking for her right now. I'm not going to talk you out of this, am I? I'm a father. Surely you can understand that. Listen, do you at least have something to defend yourself with? Any weapon? No. Well, here. Take this. Just hope that you don't have to use it. Is this normal police procedure? I've never used a gun before. I found you half dead. Nothing is normal about any of this. And for the gun, you'll see. It's easy enough. You just know what you're shooting before you pull the trigger. Got it? It'd be best if you stay nearby. I'm going to try and find a way out of here, and I'll be back with help as soon as I can. And Mr. Mason? I hope you'll find your daughter quickly. Thanks, officer. Sybil. And now you have a little message telling you that you can actually um, switch weapons using the scroll like that because before that uh, some people never knew that they can actually switch weapons directly in gameplay um, also um, I was thinking about some yeah uh, some people uh, were a little bit um, Disappointed. Some people liked the fact that I altered the dialogue, and some people hated the fact that I altered the dialogues. Uh, for me, it was just uh, simple. Uh, some of the dialogues, yes, I know those dialogues actually making reference from Twin Peaks with a very slow and kind of uh, weird way to, to, to speak. Um, but on my side, um, I always thought that, yeah, it. it it, um, it was weird, a way to speak, but also a little bit too slow and some of the acting, sorry to say, but in the original Silent Hill, the acting is not very, very good. And so I didn't know if it was like intentional for making something weird or if it was an unintentional and it was just because they didn't know exactly, so I, I don't know. Uh, but for example, I wanted to find a better way to implement the fact that Sybil want to give Harry a gun because in the original game she's like uh, here take this you know and don't blast me into uh, by mistake and I was like 
that's not the thing that a cop would actually say. <laughs> like you're giving the gun and yes, I know it's foreshadowing. Like it's actually like because you're expecting the fact that later on you will have to fight her as a boss. But at the same time, I'm like, who talks like this? Who's actually going to say to someone, you're giving a gun to someone and, and then you're saying like, don't shoot me by mistake. Uh, actually, I found a, a, a cl I think it was a clever way to, to implement that, saying that um, know what you're shooting before you pull the trigger, which is actually like a little bit more subtle, I think. So now getting the map, getting the flashlight, some healing bottle. So ammunitions. Actually, the ammunition. Uh, if you look at the the cartridge, like uh, we have uh, uh, other ways to to find uh, bullets, uh, but um, the brand is actually from Silent Hill 2. The Penguin brand is actually from Silent Hill 2. The Kinchin knife. Actually, uh, the um, the monsters. Um, I remember that a lot of people. Um, just never knew that uh, it's actually better to avoid the creatures but you uh, only few creatures you can actually fi fight them with um, close combat but the first creatures like the hair screamers and the warners not really possible to attack them in close quarter combat so first thing I'm going to do I'm going to do a save because we all know what's what's coming the radio and the air screamer blasting through the windows. Um, that is also always like I, I tried to modify it, like the the line, like he's actually saying it, like what's going on with that radio, but it's like I don't know why it's like very low. Uh, I, I don't know why like uh, I tried it like no, normally it should be at the same level as all the other lines but I don't know why here it's just like very very low don't know why but he is actually saying the line so here uh, you're finding the radio normally in the original game this is just when you're getting the radio that the, the hair screamer is actually coming from the window and here I wanted to make a little bit of a surprise because people are expecting, like people that play the original Silent Hill are expecting their hair screamer to come from that window here. And I wanted to surprise people like they are expecting it, like, okay, so it's not coming out. And then you're like, okay, so it, it's just like um, a lame, uh, you know, fan demo. So actually he couldn't actually program the hair screamer to come, come out of that window yeah that's all right and so you're going to walk to the main uh, main door and walking through the main door then you will have the air screamer going through this window over there just for the it'll it a bit of a jump scare what the hell is that so we are trying to yeah So I was a little bit more lucky this time. Uh, I altered because in the original version of the demo, um, it had like a slow reaction. That that air screamer had a very slow reaction to what's going on around him. So this is why he was actually uh, flying to the wall and then coming back to attack you. Um, so I just make him made him and only uh, this air screamer to actually a bit faster this time. The other ones will have the same type of reaction and response just because uh, if they have the same type of quick reaction um, they will attack you like every second <laughs> so it, it's not really fun. Okay so let's save another one and then uh, not going to do the main uh, quest line I, I will try to show you some of the easter eggs that are hidden in, in the city. So first thing is actually in the theater. If you're going to the theater right here, you should see uh, there is one air screamer around. Yeah, I don't know where is it. 
So here you can see that he's right there. Does he see me? No. Yes. No. No. Okay. So here you have Frank Sutherland's film James's Ladder, which is a reference to Jacob's Ladder, which is a movie that inspired Silent Hill. It was it was fun to to had all those little Easter eggs here and there. And so something that is hidden for some people, if, I don't know if a lot of people found, found it. I, I didn't have any feedbacks from the people who downloaded the video, so the, the demo, so I don't know. So here you have doors which are saying, yeah, we are open between 7 and midnight. And actually, if you're playing the game, like uh, here in France it's actually 11, uh, if you're playing the game between those two hours, then you can you have the possibility to enter inside the Queen's Burger and you have one key right there which is called the Remembrance Key normally you, if you're exploring the, the town you will find a message like over there saying that the keys are actually in the fast food so if you if you don't know if you didn't know that the keys are there, normally you should find a message uh, telling you where to find those keys. It's just there. Here you have the message. So this is another easter egg also. So Henry, I left the basement key at the restaurant. If you go there, uh, don't forget that they don't open until the evening. So just a bit of uh, explanation that when you can actually enter the the fast food. Uh, I left all your stuff downstairs, but please, if you go there, don't make too much noise. I don't want to get in trouble with the neighbors. Um, Sign Walter. So, uh, if there are some Silent Hill fans around here, you know that Henry and Walter are actually the names of the main character and the bad guy from Silent Hill 4. So that was also it, uh, Easter egg. So if you go down there, normally this door should be closed, but if you got the remembrance key, you can actually open that door. And right there you can see that, yeah, it's actually very dark, so you can actually use the light. So you can see that there are like a light source around here. If you go there, you should find a PlayStation 1. The video game console. When you get that video game console, you have to run. Because when you're finding that video game console, I'm actually uh, releasing uh, a creature that you can't kill, but uh, that creature kills you in only one or two hits only. So you really got to get quick. So here it is. Quick, 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 quick. Normally, she, yeah, she can't get out, so, yeah, she's blocked. All right. Yeah, you've really got to be quick <laughs> to avoid getting beaten by, by that thing. And now that you have it, you can actually open the inventory and go there to see the uh, old PlayStation 1, so the game console. And so it's an old video game console. I wonder what happens if I turn it on. So hearing that little uh, little music. And if you're actually leaving the inventory, now you can play as the original model of Harry Mason. That was a cool little Easter egg. Really like do, doing this one. And actually, he has all the animations from the remake version, so my version of Harry Mason. You can also go there and reactivate or reactivate the video game console if you still want to play with Harry Mason in PS1 version or updated version. So here, I'm going to get uh, the keys. Oh uh, yeah, because actually, I, I can uh, actually show on the other side that normally normally you should be going like if you're going there going to map 
objectives so it, it, you, now you have a little thing here to get your objectives so it says that uh, he has to go back to the dark alley Let's see if Cheryl's there actually one of the one of the Sand Hill fans said to me that the map that I made is actually a very big a screamer over there that the map was actually really big and actually it's smaller than the original Silent Hill map I made him uh, I made it I think like 1.5 smaller than the original one the original one is very 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 big so here going back to the dark alley and the way here you have two corners right to avoid ones and oh where is the second one he's just right there got attacked oh yeah maybe maybe healing a little bit yeah feels a little bit better so here you have the message to school does that mean that Cheryl is at the school and here you have the rusted pipe and they're not I'm not the best weapons let's be honest uh, those are not the best weapons from the original Silent Hill so where is that thing Ooh, okay it's just right there Now it's turned. Yep, he didn't saw me. Oh, no, no, he saw me. <laughs> he saw me. No, 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 no. Still after me? Yeah, he's still after me. Stopped chasing me. <laughs> so now we are, we can go to the dog house From here. So if you play the original Silent Hill, you know that you have to find the key hidden inside the dog house. And then you can actually go inside. Here you find the map, seeing that you have to find the keys for the eclipse. Oh yeah, we can actually save right there. Uh, another Easter egg, uh, not really an Easter egg, but more like an hidden weapon, is actually if you go to the store, you will find a message saying that uh, the neighbors. Oh, is right there okay so if you go to the store you will see someone saying that uh, they had problems with a neighbor uh, and the neighbor is actually the one having the American flag you can actually enter his house and find the shotgun Now you're having like uh, actually there is no uh, bullets to reload the shotgun because the shotgun is very very powerful so it would have been like a little bit of a, a cheat to having the possibility to reload the shotgun. Okay, so now uh, I can actually oh, yeah they're actually out. <laughs> So every time you will save a game, it saves the position for all the monsters. 
So you really be careful and remember, actually they are totally free to go wherever they want to go. That the monsters are totally free to to go around, to do what they, whatever they want to do. So be very careful. We're going to the store. So this is the message, so if you read that message, it, it tells you where to find the uh, the shotgun. So there, so here you have the gun ammo, you can see that the Penguin brand, and this is actually from Silent Hill 2. Here I have a healing bottle. And a save. And here you have another easter egg at Lakeside Amusement Park. And now let's try to find the keys for the Eclipse. Just a little bit of running around. kind of fun to, to recreate the uh, original map. Actually one um, one time I found the original model of the PS1 map of that map. I just imported it so here the lion key. So yeah I have imported uh, that map, the original map, the PS1 map in uh, let, let's go get the the other one over there um, inside unity and actually it was huge like the the original map was really really huge like it took me I think uh, maybe five or six minutes to get from one side to the other like it's, it was very 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 long it was like nobody can actually be <laughs> that patient so why did it work in the original one? It's, it was because Harry was faster. Harry was actually way faster in the original one, but if I had the same uh, speed as the original one, uh, people would have tell me like, oh, it looks weird that Harry is running that fast. Totally agree. <laughs> actually right now he's actually way slower, a little bit more realistic. Right, so now let's go back to the alley and get the last key. Oh, shit. I'm actually like... Yeah, you can see that on his face, he's not feeling very good. <laughs> yeah, also, I wanted to, to add that, um, that kind of thing that are in the newest games, like having the possibility to see directly on the face on, on, of the character that he's actually not feeling very well. And actually, if you're getting like very, very uh, hurt, uh, you have like half speed only for Harry, like he's actually slower. So you really need to get there. Yeah. And here, yeah, it's a little bit faster. And here, last key. Yep. Now that I have the three keys, I can actually go back and open the last door and end the demo. So I calculated that just uh, doing like uh, the main quest and watching the cutscenes, it takes you around yeah maybe 40 minutes 
to get through the entire demo. No, 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 no. Yeah. He's dead. Ah, yeah. So one hit and I'm and I'm dead. So let's not go back to where you have the the dogs. Otherwise, I will I will die, <laughs> which is not not great. I think I have one healing left that is uh, nearby. So let's let's try to find this one. But it's very fortunate that I encountered all the monsters in this run because last time I've showed the game, I've just met no monsters at all. Like the RNG was actually like with me, <laughs> didn't saw any monsters. So I think here we'll have the last healing bottle. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, wait a bit faster. And then ends the original demo of Sand Hill. No, no, no. Oh my god. Why are you here? You're not supposed to be here. Unlocked, and I finished the demo. And no, uh, for those who are asking the question, no, I will not continue uh, the development of the full game. Like I think there is another team that is working on that in Unreal. And uh, yeah, I I don't want I don't want to to do a full demo. So now let's show you a little bit of the uh, concept art and uh, well I mean concept arts it's not really concept art it's just like working progress how it looked like and what was the original idea so uh, as a surprise for a little uh, some people the original idea was not to make uh, a remake of the original Silent Hill the idea originally was to make uh, a fake teaser for Silent Hill 2, for a sequel of Silent Hill 2. So here are some of the... Uh, so I'm loading. Some of the ideas. So at first I wanted to recreate uh, a version of uh, James Sunderland that was like 15 or 20 years older than what you, you had in the original game. And so made him look like this. Actually, um, I based myself for this uh, version of um, James Sutherland, based myself on the uh, actors uh, Stellan Skarsgård and um, Sean Bean, actually, which for me are the, the actors that looked the closest to what um, James looked like in the original game. So made him like less hair. At at, fir at first he had like a lot of hair and he was very like having like really nice hairstyle and then adding less hair to make him look a little bit older. Yeah, I wanted to, to implement like already some Easter eggs, like the original uh, painting on the wall for uh, the original Silent Hill 2. So here, so reworking on James. And also I wanted like to, to make you think that uh, Laura was actually the, the main character this time. So worked on Laura and James at the same time. So Laura uh, had to look uh, just like a young girl. 
but th that is funny because I modeled her with the uh, coat, like James's coat, actually uh, on her. So like this, like I reproduced like James's uh, coat. And the funny thing is that if you look at uh, Resident Evil Village, uh, you can see that Rose, so uh, Ethan's daughter, is actually wearing the same type of clothes. And that was made way before Resident Evil Village was actually released. So that was kind of funny that we, uh, I had the same type of idea for the kind of daughter look for a survival horror. That, that was kind of uh, funny. Yeah, I wanted to have like that little uh, Easter egg on, on her t-shirt having like Robbie, Robbie the rabbit on it. So it looks on, on the characters. And so, yeah, I wanted to make like a fake teaser, just like a fake teaser of, uh, of a sequel of Silent Hill 2. Already like we had like that PT sign on the t-shirt. On the so here are some posing, some uh, lights working on the renderings. Hairs were not looking great. We wanted to, to rework on the on the hairs. Yeah, and some creatures. This is actually the creature that you can find in the in the uh, Silent Hill demo, the one that can actually kill you in only one or two hits. This is the, this is the one, the what I call the rem remembrance monster. So here it's a bit more close up. Like uh, I never was happy with Laura's face. Laura's face looked kind of weird, to be honest. Was more happy, yeah, with the face of uh, James. James looked a little bit more like what I what I expected. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, like like this. It, it looks like really great. The hair never was a fan of the of the hair. Uh, by the way, if some people know how Unity works, uh, the demo was made with UR URP Universal Render Pipeline, uh, which is not the best thing to use if you want to do photo real not really the best idea so my next project i will do it with hdrp the high definition render pipeline which is more like accurate for current gen video games and so uh, i will use that for the next project i could have used that for the unity project uh, for the um, sound Hill remake project but it was too late in production like i was already like one year and a half working on this thinking about sw switching to HDRP and I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, couldn't work. Like, um, would have been like one year, still another year just for making uh, the game compatible with the HDRP. I couldn't do that on my own. So here are some tests with the hairs. And so that was the original idea. And then we switched to uh, so here, in the progress. So here I have all the videos, etc. So normally it's uh, yeah, it's uh, in the chrono chronological time. So the original thing was actually uh, a joke that I made for Brandon. I just sent him this video. So that was the original version of the of the demo and I wanted to make a joke to uh, to Brandon saying hey look I'm actually remaking Silent Hill just like just like a joke just for the haha -ha effect you can you can see that Harry was actually in the early earlier early version hairs were not looking great uh, the jacket is not not the best looks very goofy so that was just make for a joke and and I think I posted that on Twitter too but no, no one actually uh, reacted to it <laughs> and then I started to rework on some other characters so Sybil so this is like work progress for for Sybil so the original map so that was the original like uh, the first thing I ever modeled for the Sound Hill demo was actually to have the pattern of all the streets to see uh, how large it could be. 
then what was it uh, another test for uh, for the street or for the ah yeah it was actually for the changing of the camera maybe oh no it was actually for the sound If you're hearing yeah it, it was actually for the sound like having different sounds depending on on which type of terrain you actually it was actually you you were w walking on so if you're walking on grass it should be making like sounds of grass yeah it's more like mud and here is grass So here was uh, the original version of the car that I found that is actually closer to uh, the car that Harry is actually driving in the original Silent Hill. Sadly, this model is not for sale. This is a model like I, I found it online and actually uh, one guy was actually selling it, but actually it's not for sale because this is a model from a car from an existing game. And when I found out, I was like, oh, no, 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 don't, don't do that. <laughs> So I, I switched to another car. So that is sad because that was the perfect car. This, that was exactly the car that Harry is actually driving in the original Silent Hill. Still, couldn't use it. So that was the first version of Sybil. So first version with the hair, uh, with the, um, the shirt, etc. Wasn't very fan of this look. Here updated only the, the textures. So that was the original version of the the houses, having the different houses, uh, and original version of the trees. And so right now I, I'm more like having like dead trees, which feels a little bit more accurate with the the mood of the original Silent Hill, and also the the houses totally like changed right now. So that was another test, yeah, to to show the houses. Yeah, we never. I, I didn't uh, kept those version of the houses. Oh my god, <laughs> the road is looking like very old gen. <laughs> and here was actually like going to the dark alley. That was the first version of that of that moment in the game. And here you have the camera switch. I think it was actually the, the next uh, video. Yeah. So I added some comparisons with the um, camera angles. To see if I could actually match finding back the right camera positions without any loading screens. Like what I wanted to avoid was actually having loading screens. So you can see that I followed practically exactly frame by frame. Yeah, this camera angle never never quite worked. I don't know how, what they, they actually used for that, for that angle, but I never, never was satisfied with that angle. So next, yeah, so that was the original angle, like I, what I said for the uh, broken wheelchair. So yeah, the original angle was not that interesting, to be honest. So that was the original camera work, which looked like very, <laughs> looked very robotic. Like, you see that? Yeah. yeah mm, didn't work that great. Uh, yeah, and there was like a lot of volumetric shadows but it was like too much like the, there there was effect everywhere and so we, we couldn't see anything <laughs> so removed it so that was another one yeah so the great children so modeling and then animating so they, this is like the walk cycle for the great children which is actually i think it's um 
I think it's a Mixamo animation that I altered and modified and reanimated after with layers just in order to make it look like it was a little bit of a trunk or zombie kind of walk and having the, the head like animated like like crazy like jiggling and twitching just like it's a broken head or something like that oh yeah original lighting <laughs> Harry is not impressed. <laughs> so yeah, original lighting for, for that scene with the original animation. And we worked, I, I worked a lot on this one. That, that was my benchmark when it comes to lighting and rendering. We wanted the, that scene to, to feel just like the original the original game. It was too bright, way too bright. So animation for the getting out of the car, because I wanted to have like that, that um, uh, smooth transition between animation and gameplay. So you can see that actually getting out of the car and having the, the camera just smoothly going back to the back of the character just to switch to gameplay so that was the original version of the uh, station at the beginning of the game so you can recognize the ga gas station and then you're having like that the run through the forest actually the map was way smaller originally like very very small it was supposed to only last like maybe 30 seconds and here here you have it so normally here you should actually see like i i did some trees there but that was supposed to be uh, the gillespie's house right there and here it becomes more bright and bright so it was not that subtle <laughs> that, that moment so then i added a little bit more trees but still i wasn't very satisfied yeah and uh, volumetric lighting to feel like it was already like having some kind of smoke and fog and here it was uh, Ah uh, yeah, for the for the test of the gun, way more fun. And so, if you're asking yourselves, uh, yes, uh, the great shit one can be killed. Poor great childrens. <laughs> so yeah, they they have life bar. They can be killed, but actually, you're not getting any firearms at the beginning of the game so you can't actually kill them in the original but technically it's possible you can actually kill them yeah it was just for testing the, the damages yeah and some animations So here it was for fashion animation. So that was the first test that Brendan ever did with Harry Mason's face. I think he recorded that, that with his phone. And I used my uh, fashion motion capture program in order to transfer his expressions to Harry. Here it was way over exaggerated, but it was more subtle with the last uh, model of Harry in, in the game. Here for the damage system, so having like different type of damages depending on where you're aiming and what type of weapon you're using.
not very visible on the on the creatures, sadly, but it's it's there. You can see the, you can see the damages on the creatures when you're hitting them with some some guns, some weapons. Uh, I think that was the video where I teased the fact that you can actually use uh, the PlayStation, the old PlayStation, to switch character. That was a cool easter egg, that was one of the first easter eggs I wanted to have in the game. I also find it very funny that all the animations are actually compatible with that version of Harry. So that was the test of the cutscene, so the live cutscene. Where Cheryl is seen in the distance without any buildings. And yeah, he's not talking or, or reacting or anything because I think Brendan didn't provide me uh, at that moment the fascia expressions. Is that uh, the entire thing? Yeah, it's actually the entire thing. So no nothing new in there. Or maybe the old model of this one, the hanging creature. Nothing, nothing, uh, like you can see right now, after that point, that the, the game looks more and more like it is right now. Uh, is that uh, the, yeah, I think it's the original video that I used for, to post on, on the YouTube channel. So that you already know. Jesus, what happened here? Yeah, so first test of the fashion animation. And that is very funny because that fashion animation, the what's this, what's hap what happened here, uh, you can't actually see it. Actually, the camera is too far away, but still it has fashion animation. Jesus, what happened here? So, what's the verdict? Yeah, all the fashion animation, so th that is kind of funny because this is like... Um, a compilation of old fashioned animation but without body animation for Harry. So, what's the verdict? Okay, well, I'm sure there will be another gas station down the road. I think we can make it. Jody? Jody! Where are you going? Oh, Jody. <laughs> that is oh, so I weird <laughs> to look the, I mean, the you hear me? Like, stiff body with only fashion animation. This doesn't make any sense. I wonder how long she's been out here. Sweetheart, I, I know, but... I mean, come on. Let's head back to the car. You drive us to the nearest town, and we'll try to sort this out there. I... I do. I... liked Cheryl. And that is sad, because half of the details when you're, when you're going with uh, fashion animation are totally lost when you have body animation on top. Like a lot of subtle details that just totally lost when you're doing that. A little bit sad for, for me because that is my main work. So what? So same thing. Thanks, officer. I'm, I'm civil. Another fashion animation. So that was like a full presentation, I think. Yeah, I think it was a video that I made for. Um, Oh yeah, so the original version of, the, of that cutscene. You can see with just like temporary body animation without any fascia animation. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Jodie with the, her old haircut. It was the first haircut for Jodie. Wasn't very fan of this one. In the original version, you can see that she has very long hair. Sh shown that to my students and they were all laughing. <laughs> I think those characters are just looking like... Not reacting to anything. So 
So yeah, for a long time that was like temporary animation. Just to know that at that moment we have a cutscene and then models will be replaced a little bit later. So then we had like, so that cutscene was already finished, I think. Yeah, we had lot, a lot of animations, yeah. Yeah, this one was one of the first one that have been finished. Uh, this one was for, yeah. So this is temporary animation for um, the diner cutscene. So same thing, characters just like having some temporary body animation but without any fashion animation which we call uh, in the field block out just in order to get a glance of what the scene will actually look like in the end yeah originally Sybil was supposed to move like she was supposed to get closer to Harry just to look if he's if he's all right if he's hurt or anything And the, so and the song is not the right one. <laughs> yeah, she was supposed to, to stand up at this moment, but never made sense. Like it, it, it was more like having sense when she wanted to, to interpose and just stop Harry from getting away. And someone uh, in the uh, cutscene video told me that uh, there was too much fog in there, and I totally agree. And so now, right now, if you're playing the demo, you can see that there is less fog here in the inside the, the diner looks way more natural this way so here like she wanted to stop him <laughs> it always made me laugh this animation like <laughs> you can clearly see that I wanted him to get to that grip but I agree it's like 20 centimeter <laughs> way off and then yeah she's giving the, the gun this is one animation that uh, is still inside the game like when he's, she's presenting the gun all the other animations were just scrapped and just remade just so weird to have the characters just like getting blend faces but still it was great for for the actors like I sent that video to uh, the voice actress and to Brendan so that they know and knew what the mood was and how they could uh, you know, play the characters um, I don't know if that helped but uh, guess guess it helps to, to get into the mood uh, so this was yeah the first time that it was interactive dialogue etc. so this is like near completion so nothing very interesting to, to see here so here it's actually the same thing ah uh, yeah the first time I've implemented all the sounds so this is this is exactly like the cutscene that you have right now in the in the game Jody. And yeah, and what you think? and this is like uh, the the cutscene that you have right now in the game, but that was for showing to um, Brendan because that was the last cutscene that we've ever ever made. And uh, then, uh, yeah, we have like a couple of other like um, other characters. Like, uh, if you want to take a closer look at Cheryl. So this is a model of Cheryl that was very complicated to to remake all her clothes because uh, in the original game she had like those little tiny cats or I don't I don't know what they are but they had she, she had that and 
there was no way I could find a high resolution version of that dress to get all the details. So I had to get into the dark corners of the web <laughs> in order to find the, the right thing to, to, to get that design right. Uh, here, uh, I, no, it's not the last version of, of Sybil. Uh, close to, to that one, but not the last one. Like the the shirt is not the right the last one. I think, yeah, this is the last version of Sybil with the leather glove. Like, a, forgot that for a long time that she had actually in the, in the original game, she had leather glove. Also the creatures. So we have the Gorner. So the Groner, it, it, wa it was um, something that one uh, guy in the previous video told me, like in, in the Dino cutscene, to respect the original designs of the creatures. But that is very difficult because we have like concept arts of the creatures uh, made by Ito, the, designers, the designer of the original Silent Hill games for the monsters. So we have that. And you have uh, the look of the um, models in the PS1 version of the game. And the two versions are completely different. Like if you're looking, for example, at the Groner, uh, in uh, the concept art, they look like uh, brownish uh, kind of uh, skinny dogs. And in the original PS1 game, you can, s I, I always uh, saw those as uh, dogs without skin. Just like they, they are being skinned and you can see the, the apparent muscles, etc. On, on the dogs. So I never knew what was the right design. So I decided to make a blend of both. So this is like uh, a dog without his skin. Like he is very like uh, skinny. And also I wanted to have like some burned skin at some point. Just to, because the, those creatures actually are a remembrance of Cheryl's past and her fears, etc. And so um, I think I, I thought it was kind of cool to, to see the, that the dog was actually burned or something like that to remember what happened to Cheryl, like the tragic fate of, of Cheryl. So same thing for the air screamer. The air screamer was actually a pain to, to, to do because Normally they are supposed, like all the creatures in the original Silent Hill are supposed to, uh, to represent something from Cheryl's perspective. So the dogs were actually a fear of dogs. For the Hair Screamer, it was actually like uh, her love for insects, but also for dinosaurs. So I didn't know if, she, if it was supposed to look like an insect or like a dinosaur. I didn't know. And so uh, I took like, at one point I was like, okay, let, let's take something like, okay, let's go with the dinosaur approach. And so I went with that predotodactyl type of approach for the hair screamer, which is maybe not correct for some people, but I was like, let's, let's take that. Let's, let's go with that interpretation of the, of the monster. And then you have the great children. So great children was actually way easier to get right. Because here you have the concept art that looks pretty much just like the model in the game. So I just like recreated that model. Uh, so here it has a green tint to it, but they are called great children. So I added that gray, grayish type of tint on it. And having some like stains, like blood stains, and having something like dripping on the, on the creature, and they are armed like in the uh, in the game, they are armed with scalpels to attack you. And that's pretty it, I think. Yeah, some other renders, but more like technical aspects about how the character were modeled and the rig. So the system, like all the bones, because that, that's my work. Uh, that's my everyday work, do the rigging. So creating some uh, 
skeleton and systems in order to animate characters. And same thing for the fascia expressions. So here you have a range of all the fascia expressions that Ari can actually do with the rig. Was fun. Was fun to, to do to do that. Okay, and yeah, so that is like the last version of the map. So way different from what you've seen before. And yes, that's it. Two years, two years of work working on that Silent Hill demo was uh, was fun. Uh, sometimes was a little bit infuriating, to be honest. Sometimes I didn't know what I was supposed to do and how to to make the, the that that thing work. But now it's released, so uh, I will post uh, in the description of the video just underneath. If you didn't get the link, it's already uh, available in the teaser, like the previous video I've posted. You can download it; it's for free. It will always be for free. Uh, if you didn't, if you don't have it, I will post this underneath that video too, so that you can actually download the last version of that demo. And that is it for me. <laughs> so. Thank you for your patience for uh, watching this entire video. It's like nearly two hours of me talking about the project. Um, next video, um, I'm, I'm expecting to go back to something I already did. So not going to spoil the fun. Uh, I'm expecting to go back to something I already did, but it will on only be a video. I will not do another uh full demo playable demo because that that takes too much time too 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 long it's it was actually like two years of something i knew i couldn't make any money out of and um but it was made for fun it was made with passion and i was very very happy to to release it for all the Sentinel players uh the only thing that was a little bit <laughs> Uh, I was a little bit concerned about the fact that at one point I knew that Konami would actually release a, or announce a new Sound Hill game. It was like, oh my god, you know, I'm working on something that maybe they will announce, like they are remaking the original Sound Hill, and all the work that I've done so far would have been lost and, uh, you know, just worthless. So yeah, I was uh, a little bit uh, in desperation at some point, but uh, now it's released, it's out. Now they can redo like uh, maybe another all the people like the, the other guys doing the Santil remake in Unreal where to do better. Um, uh, and in that case, I would gladly play their demo and l look at it. And uh, I think it's not near completion, but at least it could be interesting to pl to to see someone else's work on a remake of Sound Hill. But uh, yeah, next project for video game, video game project, that will be my own IP. Uh, I will post some videos, uh, not in the near future for that, for that project, because I, I have a lot of work to do in order to prepare that. That will be done in HGRP, so I need to rework everything I've done so far uh, with, um, with that project. But uh, I will keep, keep you posted, guys, on the next project that I think would be more interesting than uh, what I've uh, always wanted to do. So that would be a survival horror, uh, more like tactical survival horror, uh, inspired by uh, the movie from 1982, The Thing, from John Carpenter, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Uh, the book, um, Color from Outer Space, from H.P. Lovecraft, and the last book, that uh, sorry i'm late for the stream is this project to be released at some point it is for learning uh it's already released eugene it's already released uh, if you go to my previous video you have a link to download uh, the full demo like uh, you just have to unzip it and you can have an uh, executable another question with the stream record will yeah yeah it will be available afterwards yes I never, I never uh, erase uh, my uh, my live streams. Uh, I think I streamed uh, me playing 
Metal Gear Solid at one point, but I totally like erased those because that was not very interesting. But uh, this one, I will not erase it because, uh, yeah, that is like me presenting the demo and explaining how I uh, mainly <laughs> how I did things. But um, yeah, next project will be my own my own survival horror. So this time, more surprises. We say you made my day. You're welcome. No problem. I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> That is always my, my goal, like making people happy. Like, I'm happy when people are happy. So if you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy that demo. I will, uh, so, um, so that you know, uh, I will not continue working. Like I will not do the entire video game, like the entire Scientia project. Uh, I'm just, I just redone that demo just for fun, just because I could and uh yeah just for you know the fans because i'm a huge fan of sand hill and um wanted to share that with other fans just because we we never expected that this year uh konami would announce new sand hill games which are uh, i'm actually way more excited about about the chris of Gans new movie actually more than actually replaying other Silent Hill games, but we'll see. We'll see about that. Your take on Thank you, thank you. Um, for 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 the for the characters, you have to know that uh, I've been working in the field like. Um, character modeling, uh, rigging and animation, character animation and fashion animation for 12 years now. <laughs> I worked on fashion animation. I don't know if you've seen previous videos that I made, but I worked on uh, Re Resident Evil 7 officially. I made uh, fashion animation for, for that game. I made fashion animation for Horizon Zero Dawn, the video game. And I worked on uh, the show Love, Death and Robots season one and the episode is called uh, beyond the aquila rift this is the the episode i worked on so yeah i worked on a lot of sh uh, uh, there are other projects that i worked on but i don't remember <laughs> the, the names of the projects but uh I, I worked in that field for 12 years and um i always wanted to share you know with people my passion for those projects for video games for movies and and uh, literature and things like that. So that is uh, all was that I wanted to, to do. Let's see, can say I'm happy. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Dean. Thank you. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's an honor for me for ha having like people coming to, to say hello and to, to exchange and to to talk about other projects, etc. For Bluebeard's James look, yeah, me too. I'm I'm not very optimistic about the remake of Sand Hill 2. Like from all the Sand Hill games, I think the first one really need a remake. This is why I, I worked on the remake of Sand Hill 1. For, for me, that is the one that really needs a remake. And uh, reimagination and reinterpretation with the latest Sand Hill games we've ever seen. But remaking Silent Hill 2 was the most uh, complicated one, I think. Because that is the best one. That's the best Silent Hill game in the, in the Silent Team era. So, um, kind of complicated. Will be kind of complicated. Yeah. Uh, if, even with the, the trailer they released, I, I found it, yeah, yeah, 71 needs a proper remake, true. Like, uh, this one, like, uh, from, from gameplay to the looks, also to the designs, because some of the designs are kind of dated, and, you know, with the... The new Silent Hill games, uh, I think like it needs a little bit of rework in order to reimagine some of the monsters to make more sense. Uh, 
because when you look at Silent Hill 3, for example, that is a direct sequel to Silent Hill 1, you can feel that Silent Hill 3 has a, a better understanding about what the design of the creature uh, has to be as a meaning, you know. And um, I'm lacking that from Silent Hill 1, but that is normal because that is the first one. So, you know, they they were not really sure about the interpretation, if it was the right path, the, the right way to, to do it. This is why Silent Hill 2 uh, was like very appreciated because you can see that it is maturity. Like they, they knew where they were going from Silent Hill 2. And so, yeah, <clears throat> just to watch the, the, the live presentation of all the projects in original Silent Hill 2, you wouldn't use yeah yeah totally and also the fact that he's kind of lethargic like the fact that he's lacking emotions because when you play Silent Hill 2 for the first time you're just thinking that he's like very like maybe exhausted or maybe he's not expecting anything and actually the fact that he's like that could be interpreted in, you know, with the two like good ending and bad ending it can be interpreted with those two, because either uh, Harry, uh, sorry, James, is um, like not um, either with the bad with a bad ending is like feeling not guilty about what he's done, the fact that he killed his wife. Sorry for the spoiler, but this is Silent Hill Two. Like it's a very old game, but uh, either it doesn't it, it doesn't feel guilt about uh, the murder or is like not having the possibility to forgive himself yeah yeah like david david lynch like there is a lot of uh lynchian type of uh, you know it's uh just like a uh, middle drive like where you don't know exactly uh what the characters are feeling uh if you're actually inside someone's head or, or something like that. So they always said that they were uh, very, um, very inspired by um, David Lynch's uh, TV series uh, Twin Peaks for the characters and for the fact that they are not actually speaking truth or hiding some of the uh, dark past of the town, etc. Which is something that was also used in uh, another video game that is not made by a uh, Konami, but uh, by um, uh, the guys, uh, I don't remember, uh, Remedy, by Remedy, uh, which is called uh, Alan Wake. I re really enjoyed Alan Wake, which feels a little bit... Uh, Twin, Pe Twin Peaks is great. Twin Peaks, um, there are not a lot of things that David Lynch made that I really, really like. Uh, for, for example, uh, I just hate... Uh, is uh, his movie uh, Dune uh, because I've read the books and uh, when I see that movie but even, even David Lynch don't really like his version of Dune but uh, for me I was like uh, uh, yeah it's actually deviating a little bit too much from the book and some of the visuals are not according to his to, uh, I don't find a lot of David Lynch in that movie Deadly Premonition as well. Yeah, Deadly Premonition 2, yeah. That game too was very deeply uh, influenced by uh, by Twin Peaks. And someone, for example, someone told me like uh, for the cutscene in the uh, in the cafe, in the diner that I remade, uh, someone said to me like they wanted the dialogue to be slower just like Twin Peaks, but I was like, I, I'm not actually trying to recreate uh, exactly that vision. This is my vision of Sound Hill. If I had to remake it, this is how I would actually do it to make uh, the dialogue a little bit more believable. And uh, still, still, the dialogue is still slow, but uh, a little bit more believable. I read the books yet, unfortunately. Dune, uh, th those are my favorite books. I've read them when I was in high school, uh, read that, uh, of course, The Lord of the Rings, 
because the, the, the first movie was out, so I wanted to read the books. So I read the books. Uh, at the same time, I, le uh, I read The Silmarillion, so another book from Tolkien, which was way more complicated to read than Lord of, Lord of the Rings. Um, another book that I've read at that time, read so many books at that time. Uh, yeah, a lot of books by H.P. Lovecraft. Um, this is where I learned about um, Call of Cthulhu and uh, Color from Outer Space and the thing uh, at the door. I, th I think it's what it was called like that, like the thing at the door. Uh, those are my favorite H.P. Uh, Lovecraft stories. I have recently bought The Lord of the Rings with the... Yeah, with the... Um, um, uh, I was thinking about <laughs> translation, but actually no, it's not translated if you're if you're English, <laughs> because here in France, uh, every time they're re-releasing re Lord of the Rings in in French, uh, it's always with a new translation. So every time it it changes. So we have like I don't know how many versions of the book. <laughs> so every time they want to translate it. This is Unity. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's available for download. You just go to the previous video I posted. You have a link just below and you can download it. And you just have to unzip it and you just have to double click on this one. And here you go. You can actually play the original, uh, not the original, but my remake, uh, my vision of a remake of Silent Hill 1. As, as well at some point these stories begin to repeat themselves in terms of structure and topics totally i totally agree but uh, it's a case of a lot of creators you know because um even filmmakers oh you're making one cool unity or unreal so yeah um Oh, another one. <laughs> yeah, that, that is why I don't want to continue. Like, there are so many people that are working on Silent Hill remakes. That I'm like, uh, like uh, I want to release mine and then other people can actually have fun with it. But then I, I want to, to work on my own, my own video game after that. Oh, Unity 2. Great. Hope, yeah, the, hope that you don't make the same mistake as I did. <laughs> because here in my in my demo, I used the URP, Universal Render Pipeline. I should have used HDRP, but I wasn't confident enough to use HDRP at the time. So my next project will be in HDRP. Just doing it for something to kill some time with. Yeah, but it's it's great. Like for, for me, it was great to work on the Silent Hill remake because you can actually learn from that. You know, you can learn a lot from redoing something like trying to respect the original vision and the original pace of one game. It's great because you can learn a lot from it and then you can actually use what you learn in order to create your own game. I must say it's for learning, unfortunately. So I'm a bit skeptical, but I'd be happy to see it done. Yeah. Yeah, HGRP would be more appropriate. Oh, HGRP is very, is very broken right now. Oh, sad because uh, I was um, beginning to to work on my uh, next game with HDRP. Uh, we'll see. I will see. <laughs> if, if it is true bro broken, then I go back to URP. I'm really making something and trying to get. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's, it's great, yeah, to, to create your own game because when you know how they did something, then you can actually, um, you know, decompose what you learned. And so only using the most essential bricks in order to create your own system. So that is the, uh, that, that is the best mindset in order to recreate. I'm, I'm also a teacher in uh, 3D uh, cinema and video game school. And that is something I always tell my student like that. Uh, First, uh, instead of trying to create something from scratch, try to recreate something that you've already seen before, like an old video game that you liked, 
And then by trying to recreate it, you can actually learn way more from this. And so you can actually de deconstruct um, you know, the skeleton of what your video game is supposed to, to look like and play like. SGRP is very well implemented. That's so many first things. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's what I uh, I used for for my um, my version of the the remake of Sand Hill. I used uh, the URP with post processing. Like I have so many layers of post processing in that game, but still it works great. Like uh, you you can actually play it in sixty FPS. Like no problem. I'm still struggling with making the character looks as close to the original as possible. Uh, uh, today, you know, you, you you have like so many tools in order to uh, um, create characters a little bit more easily. You know, uh, you have like s some things, um, uh, something that you can actually find um, just let me uh, yep um, like if you want uh, something for you to test uh, it's not like a, a human being but if you've seen my video from Metal Gear Solid something to know um, something to know is that the Grey Fox model I made for my Metal Gear Solid video is available for free. So this is my um, my uh, CG Trader account. So you can see that this is free. So if you want, you can actually download it. It's compatible with um, Unreal and Unity. So if you want, you can actually download it. Uh, it has everything. It has a uh, the 3D model and uh, the skeleton and controllers, you can animate it yourself. And it has the textures and everything. So you can actually download that model and have fun with it. <laughs> and it's for free, so you, you don't have to spend money on this character. If you want it, I, I will copy paste the, the link right there here you have it oh sorry <laughs> character creator and face builder for blender and meta human but definitely um then you're going to the territory that i don't like <laughs> the um, the 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 systems to create your character no, no the systems to create like not create, but actually to pre-make characters. I don't like that because, uh, for example, uh, I will take your example of MetaHuman. This, this is a, a, an example I take for my student. Um, I'm always uh, taking MetaHuman as an example because you can actually create a photorealistic human with it. You can actually export it and animate it. But if something, you want to modify something. Let's say you want to modify something on your character that you created by with MetaHuman. Or if you have a problem, like the character has a problem with importation or whatever, or you're trying to modify something on your character and you can't, then you're actually blocked because MetaHuman was made by uh, a system that was used by Triateral and Cubic Motion before they were bought by Epic Games. And those systems are entirely automatic. So it's great for making like NPCs but if you want to make your own character, your own main character with MetaHuman, it's not the most ideal. Because if you want to modify it or alter it or make it your own, it's difficult. I would not say it's not possible. It might be possible, but it's very difficult. And same thing for character creator. Like it's... Um, um, that is why, for me, I always uh, sculpt my characters myself. And um, if you want to know, uh, there are a couple of uh, softwares that could that could help you out. 
uh, with uh, doing some um, some retopology, for example, for, for faces. For example, there is one uh, that was called uh, 3D Wrap. Yeah, yeah, 3D Wrap. 3D Wrap. Uh, that is a uh, it's a software that allows you to get a scan from any face. And you can actually wrap, so actually uh, design a retopology on that face that you scanned and then transfer, uh, you know, textures and all the things that you want on that new face. Better way in long term, you learn how to sculpt properly. Like I said. Yeah, yeah. A, lo a lot of people have tried it, you know, trying to recreate your own face with MetaHuman and at best, it looks close enough, like 80%. At worst, it looks uncanny. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of recognize myself, but not entirely, so it looks weird. Oh, so you know about 3D wrap, yeah. Yeah, it's great for, uh, so for example, um, if, you want, um, if you want a good pipeline for recreating faces, you can use um, so 3D wrap, and you can also use a software that is free, that is called uh, Meshroom. It's a software that is used for doing photogrammetry. So this software right here, Meshroom. So Meshroom is a photogrammetry. Uh, I don't know if you already made photogrammetry by the way, uh, for, for people that don't know what photogrammetry is, um, it's a system that um, is based on f uh, photographs, so pictures of one single object. So actually you're taking your, um, your camera and you're turning around a subject. So it could be like an object, it could be, yeah, not that one too. Oh, photogrammetry obvious. Great. <laughs> um, so you can actually use that and you can use 3D wrap. And so basically you can actually uh, do whatever face uh, you, you want, basically. And so for people that don't know what photogrammetry is, so you're taking a lot of pictures of one single subject and you're giving all those pictures to that software. So here it's uh, 3D uh, Meshroom, sorry. And it will recreate a 3D approximation of that object depending on how many photos and the resolution of those photos that you yet to made. Uh, the only problem is that uh, the 3D mesh that will be recreated is actually very dense. So it has like a lot of polygons, but using other softwares just like Maya, I'm basically working with Maya, uh, Maya has um, a retopology tool, or you have all the softwares just like Topogun. For example, Topogun is doing a great job at doing retopology. And so you can actually retopologize, so redesign the, the, the polygons structure, and then you can transfer uh, all the textures from that photogrammetry file to uh, your uh, uh, less high density mesh, basically for six or seven years now oh my god yeah the issue for now is rigging and animating my character i guess uh in that case um yeah blender is great because blender is free but for me uh i'm, I'm still working with maya a, lo a lot like every day's work i'm working with maya and for me with my experience uh 12 years i worked 12 years in fashion animation and rigging and uh uh, characters modeling uh, Maya for me ob objectively is one of the best I would not say it's the best it, it's one of the best it has a lot of problems like any other software like what what software doesn't have any problems <laughs> to be honest um, it has these problems but in the end Maya is very well done for making rigs. It has, uh, for example, I, I, I hate to say that um, this software is good, this software is bad, you know. I always tend to say this software is nice for making this, but not for making that, you know, because every software has its strength and its weak points. 
Maya is great if you want to model characters and you want to rig them and you want to animate them. It is great for that. If you want to recreate an entire level, like if you want to recreate, I don't know, uh, a building, a room or something like that, Maya is not made for that. Maya is not great for remaking like uh, rooms and things like that. The issue for Maya. Um, for example, 3ds Max is a little bit better for creating like for making like levels and rooms and cars or whatever. But uh, 3ds Max is less less made for uh, rigging and animating characters. Maya has been a standard for a long time. It still is. Like um, a lot of people are asking me to work with Maya. So I'm still working with Maya every time. And even if you're, if you're uh, working with Maya and they're asking you for an FBX, Maya can export an FBX or import an OBJ or something like that. So no problem using that software too. But yeah, for, for characters, Maya uh, have always been in the... Um, and, uh, and today it's not that uh, because for a long time Maya was kind of expensive. That was its biggest problem. But right now it's like only like three hundred hundred dollars or something like that for one year use, I think. So it's not that not that costly for indie uh, developers to buy a, a Maya license. So it's kind of kind of neat. So you just have to ask for a Maya Indie um, license, and then no problem. I'm Max user currently, but not the software as well. But 3ds Max is great for um, for recreating, you know, uh, art surface and, uh, like I said, levels, buildings, uh, robots, for example. If you want to recreate, like, if I want to recreate a robot, I would not use uh, Maya. To be honest, I will use Maya to rig it, but to model it, not the best uh, thing to, to use uh, Maya for. You're welcome, no problem. So yeah, so I hope that you guys love the little presentation and uh, all those discussions. Two hours and 20 minutes, that's a new record <laughs> for, for a stream. So yeah, so hope that you guys enjoyed that little conversation, that little time. For me, on my side, it's like uh, past midnight, it's like midnight and 30 minutes. So I think I will actually turn off the computer and just go to sleep and then just uh, think about the next projects. But uh, yeah, it was it was nice talking with you guys. And uh, thank you for um, for the information about uh, your version of. Uh, don't don't hesitate to to tell me, uh, Bill, when you you will have your version of your Silent Hill uh, demo, when it will be out. Can't wait to to see how other people take on Silent Hill. It will be, be interesting. It's been fun. We enjoyed it. You're welcome, no problem. You're the one that I that I actually should thank because actually uh, if you if you were weren't there, thanks for doing a live stream Max. You're welcome Brandon. Thank you. Thank you for making the voice of Harry Mason. But uh Next time we will talk about the next project, about next characters, next stories. That will be more fun. Like we are, we'll be totally free to do more and not to be as many constraints with the characters. So that will be more fun, I think. I have a video on my channel. Okay. Oh, oh uh, you already have a video. I, I will. I will look at it. But maybe tomorrow because right now I'm I'm a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit tired, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have your 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 link to your channel, so I will look at it tomorrow, no problem. But thanks for for sharing that. 
all right guys I would have to call it a day and turn the stream off and go to sleep because I need some sleep <laughs> but it was great it was great talking with you guys and thank thank you for your attention for uh, for staying with me talking with me that was interesting and and fun <laughs> all right guys so see you later with the next videos next projects do not hesitate to share like in the comments below if you have also other projects like if other people have projects do not hesitate to to share to share uh, underneath uh, in the comments that would be fun to to share with all the people to share all the projects after all we're all playing video games loving video games loving movies shows and literature so let's share all that good th good thing thank you have a good night too i don't know what time is it on your end but uh if you're if it is middle of your day then good day to you sir and if it is your night well good night and for you all, uh, see you later with another stream or another video. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Have a good day.